So welcome to this last session of the day. My name is Sean Morton. I am a nurse and I'm a senior lecturer. You can see that on the screen there. <clears throat> so I became a nurse in a long, long time ago, and uh, you're probably going to think this sort of ages ago now, but I kept, became a nurse in 1990 and I have worked in emergency care <clears throat> and neurosurgical care for many, many years. And I now have the privilege of teaching uh, new student nurses or uh, nursing students at the University of Lincoln. So if anybody <clears throat> out there wants to become a nurse or uh, wants to um, or is interested in that, particularly if you're a guy, because we uh, um, men in nursing is a very, very small number. So if it's something that interests you, please do, by all means, uh, let somebody know at the university and uh, they'll no doubt put you in touch with us to <clears throat> to discuss that. <clears throat> now. The reason why I think it's important to sort of say what I am up front is because uh, I am a nurse and I am not an expert in everything, um, but I have interest and uh, some in-depth knowledge in certain areas. <clears throat> and I quite like making things really, really easy for myself uh, when I am learning things. And I think this is really important that, that you folks do that as well, <clears throat> that you uh, find an easy way to understand something that might be quite difficult. And that's sort of what I'm trying to do here today with you folks. <clears throat> I apologize, I've got a bit of a dry cough. It's not the dreaded uh, dreaded uh, COVID at the moment, so that's good. But it, if I do stop every now and then for a cough and a drink, I, I do apologize for that. And if you folks have any questions, I'm pretty sure this is not the first session you've been to today. And if you've got any questions, please, by all means, put them in the chat box in the bottom there. <clears throat> And uh, assuming I can keep pace with them, I'll try and answer them as I go along. So, um, so that's <clears throat> that's where we're going to start. So, look forward to getting some of your questions and going from there. So, this session then is on. Uh, it's called Have a Heart. Okay, <clears throat> and I want you to do something first. I have decided that uh, uh, over the last lockdown, um, a guy became quite popular on 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 the internet and YouTube. <clears throat> A guy called Joe Wicks, and he uh, became very famous by doing a lot of exercise videos and PE. <clears throat> so I want to see if I can do the same thing by what I'm about to do now. So the first thing I want you folks to do when you're out there is very briefly <clears throat> check your pulse for me. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to find on your wrist <clears throat> and you're going to find where your thumb is. Like I'm trying to see where your thumb is there. And you're going to come down to your wrist in there and there's a little gap <clears throat> very lightly hold that area for me we do that for about 30 seconds and i want you to count how many times your fingers feel a pulse OK, that will do. <clears throat> Hopefully you've got a figure in your head. Now, um, um, colleagues of mine and students of mine will have my guts for garters with what I'm about to tell you. But purely for the purposes of this video in this presentation, I want you to take that number that you've got <clears throat> and multiply it by four for me. OK, and whatever that number is, remember that in your head. OK, I did it myself just here right now. And whilst I'm a, a senior lecturer and I'm used to teaching, <clears throat> this is quite nerve wracking for me talking to a computer in my office without an audience. So <clears throat> my pulse rate is up ever so slightly and I've got it around about 85 to 90 beats per minute. <clears throat> That's a figure I want you to keep in your head. Now the Joe Wicks moment. <clears throat> I want you to all. And I don't know whether you're doing this. This is the thing, because I can't see you. But I'm going to trust you are going to do for me right now 20 star jumps. <clears throat> Off you go. I'm not going to do them because there's no room in my office. So you folks do 20 star jumps for me. <clears throat> Brilliant. <clears throat> I'm hoping you've done those. And now what I want you to do is feel for your pulse again and <clears throat> work out and, and, and do the same calculation. So we're going to count how many you're feeling in 15 seconds 
and then multiply it by four again. <coughs> Brilliant. <clears throat> so multiply that by four. And I am hoping, I am hoping that the second number you got was higher than the first number. <clears throat> now, you're going to say to me, oh, my goodness, here I've come to a lecture <clears throat> and you're telling me something really, really obvious. So what actually is going on there? So if you want to put some <clears throat> answers in the chat, that's absolutely fine. But what is actually going on at that moment? What is going on with your body? Yes, your heart is beating faster. But why is it beating faster? Why, what's it doing? <clears throat> what's its purpose for beating faster? Why is it doing it? So this is what we're hopefully <clears throat> going to try and get to today to work out what's going on. But something else has probably happened. Not only are you feeling your pulse rate going up because you're exercising, but you probably noticed you started to breathe a lot faster as well. <clears throat> and what we're going to try and work out today is why your breathing gets faster and why your pulse rate went up and what is actually going on okay <clears throat> and I, I i think this is i've simplified it and so for some folks out there you might think oh this is so easy this is not worth thinking about some of you folks hopefully will go away thinking <clears throat> that's a really cool way of understanding it <clears throat> like i said to you at the beginning i try and keep things simple i try and keep things easy so i understand how to do them <clears throat> and that is why I have chosen to do it this way. So some facts then. These are really, really interesting facts. But I think <clears throat> it'll give you an idea as to how important this system is that we're dealing with. And I'm, I'm gathering that most of you folks out there are doing your GCSEs. So you're youngsters. <clears throat> you're not old like me. So you're young and you've got the opportunities to consider all of those things that people are telling you <clears throat> if you do them. Look after yourself. Exercise. Don't start smoking. Don't do all those bad things for you. Cut down on the amount of fast food that you're eating. <clears throat> We're doing it for a reason. You might sit there at 15 and 16 and go, really, it's not a problem. <clears throat> I'm healthy. I'm young. What's the big deal? But if I was to ask you folks, <clears throat> how many people in your family or your older family that maybe had a stroke or a heart attack? <clears throat> You're probably going to say to me, yes, I've got I've got somebody that's, that's happened to. So what we're talking about right now is so important <clears throat> and um, it will help you hopefully consider how important these organs and this body of ours is <clears throat> and prevent you hopefully from getting to that position when you are older. So your heart then. <clears throat> There's a there's a not a real one, obviously. <clears throat> so heart, it's probably about the right size, about the size of a fist. OK, and it sits in your chest about here. I'm looking at the video because it's got me reversed. <clears throat> it sits about here and it um, sits between the lungs and it you're feeling it beating. So <clears throat> you folks that whenever you do exams, you feel yourself getting stressed and your palms get sweaty. You feel your heart racing. You maybe feel it in your head. <clears throat> you feel sick, probably. And this is because this heart <clears throat> is working harder to try and help you deal with that problem that you've got. Now, <clears throat> lots of things are going on here. <clears throat> this heart that I've got here, not this one, obviously, believe it or not, <clears throat> I don't know if to ask the question or not, because I don't know if I'm going to get an answer. But I want you to, this heart in a day beats about 100,000 times. Just think about that. <clears throat> Your heart beats about 100,000 times a day. So if you do your maths, I said we, you know, we, we, we did some uh, PE there. <clears throat> now we're going to move on to a bit of maths. So you're covering maths in this session as well. <clears throat> so if it beats 100,000 times a day, that's about 38, 36,000, 36 million times a year. <clears throat> that's a lot of beats that this thing is doing. And your 80 year old relative, if you've got one, their heart has probably beat about three billion times, <clears throat> three billion times. That's how much this heart has beaten. So really important. <clears throat> and when we breathe, we breathe in and out about 43,000 times a day. 
That's about 16 million times a year and about 1.2 billion times in somebody who's about 80. So why am I telling you this sort of stuff? For a couple of really cool reasons. Number one, <clears throat> we're not aware we're doing it. I, I'm, I don't have to make a conscious effort to breathe. I don't have to make a conscious effort to make my heart beat. <clears throat> I can do things to make my heart beat faster and me to breathe faster. I can run. <clears throat> I can do exercise. I can do the star jumps that you just did. That will all help this thing beat faster. <clears throat> so it's really important when we think about all that work that this heart is doing. And if I take this heart apart, <clears throat> you probably can't see them very clearly. But you probably did this in the lecture that was preceding this where my colleague dissected a heart. <clears throat> and she probably showed you those valves in the heart, these little flaps of tissue that move when you are when your heart's beating to move the blood from where it needs to be. <clears throat> now think about this in context of something you probably would take, well, when you do go back to school, you may well be taken to school in the car, or you may have driven somewhere. Your parents probably take your car in every year to get it serviced. <clears throat> they probably get valves changed and this changed and that changed. But thinking about your heart, what do we do to this on a yearly basis to make sure it's still working? <clears throat> we probably don't do much to it. There's no maintenance we can do with it, apart from looking after ourselves, eating healthily, not smoking and doing exercise. <clears throat> but this heart we've got to look after because of all that work that it is doing. <clears throat> so the system that this heart sits within, it doesn't sit on its own. So you can feel your pulse, but it's not the only thing. It needs to be told to beat <clears throat> and it needs to be told to beat because something else is telling somewhere else that the heart needs to beat. So within this complex system <clears throat> that includes the heart, we also have the brain. OK, and <clears throat> the brain is the is the control center. This is the per this is the this is the group of cells, the the organ that is telling your body what to do. It's telling me to beat the heart. It's telling me to lift my arm up. It's telling me that if I trap my finger in a door to pull my hand away. <clears throat> this is what my brain is telling my body all the time. <clears throat> and it's selling sending thousands and millions of messages backwards and forwards all the time <clears throat> in our body that we're not aware of. So Let's put some of that into context. <clears throat> Your brain is firing these messages backwards and forwards. That's why when you go to an exam room and you see that exam room and it says silence, please, outside the door. So one thing that always got me <clears throat> really worried and anxious was that silence exams in progress. The moment I saw that, my hands started to sweat and I started to get stressed. <clears throat> Even to this day, it's probably one of those things that triggers in me a response, even though I'm not going to an exam. What that means is my brain is saying to my heart, <clears throat> we've got to look after this person. We've got to look after this person. And it's got to send messages very, very quickly from one place to another. <clears throat> to give you a bit of an idea on that, um, I, I was trying to work out something. And I, I, I love going to Paris. <clears throat> I have family in Paris. And I go there pretty regularly. I haven't been regularly, obviously, at the moment. But one of the ways you can get to Paris, and you may well have done this, is by Eurotunnel. <clears throat> you may get on into London and get out of Paris. So roughly working this out, you it takes about two and a half hours to travel from London to Paris. <clears throat> and that's about, uh, what did we say it was? About 200, 300 miles, something like that. OK. <clears throat> Your brain will send messages at about 200, 170 to 280 miles an hour, depending on where you read, <clears throat> but really, really fast. So that means if you got on a train in London to go to Paris, you would have just arrived at Paris and that message would have gone to Paris and come back to London again. <clears throat> it is that quick. So this is why we have these sorts of responses <clears throat> and we rely on all these things going on to make us work. So we've got the brain, <clears throat> we've got the heart, the heart, I think is 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 a very important part we know that and that is made up of four key areas four main areas in the heart <clears throat> and they are very easy to remember left and right so that's the easy one <clears throat> left on the left right on the right that's easy we've got that and then you've got things called atria or ventricles okay and the atria sit at the top top 
and the ventricles sit at the bottom. <clears throat> so when you look at a heart, you probably did this earlier on, so I won't go into too much detail. We have the atria at the top and the ventricles at the bottom. <clears throat> Brilliant. <clears throat> now, what we also need, we've got a heart that's being told what to do by the brain. <clears throat> it now needs to work out what it's going to do with what it's moving around. So we need the lungs, don't we? So the lungs sit in your chest here, <clears throat> and they're made up of lots and lots of very, very intricate, intricate um, um, structures. And obviously it starts with that airway where we breathe in, and it breaks down into what we call bronchi, and then bronchioles as they get smaller. <clears throat> and at the end of the bronchioles are these tiny, tiny little sacs called alveoli. And the alveoli have blood vessels on them <clears throat> that the heart has pumped blood to, and they're going to do something called gaseous exchange. They're going to take the oxygen that I breathe in into my lungs, and then the lungs have got to go, right, we need somewhere to move it. <clears throat> so we've got the alveoli, uh, bronchioles, bronchi, and stuff like that. <clears throat> and when we breathe, we're breathing in 21% oxygen. And that oxygen that we're breathing in is quite a small number, I think, um, but it's breathing in a small amount of oxygen. So our body has to make the best use of it can, that it can of that amount of oxygen that we breathe in. <clears throat> it's made up of arteries, which are big, okay? <clears throat> it's made of arterioles, which are smaller. It's made of arterial capillaries, <clears throat> even smaller still. It's made of venous capillaries, which are very, very tiny. And it's made of venules, which are slightly bigger. And it's made up of veins, <clears throat> or some of your big veins, which are really, really big. <clears throat> and you've got other things in there. So we've got the thing that tells it what to do, the thing that's doing the work, thing that's getting the stuff to transport around, and then it needs somewhere to take it. And that's going to be my brain, my heart, my muscles, my bones, my lungs, <clears throat> my kidneys, my intestines, my stomach, my feet, wherever I need oxygen, okay? <clears throat> so we've got all of these structures, the liver, skin, and bone and muscles. <clears throat> all of these are things that are going on in our body all the time. So <clears throat> hopefully that's all clear. That's all good. I haven't seen any questions, so I'm assuming you're still with me and it's all making sense. Any questions so far? <clears throat> no? Cool. That's fine. It's not a problem. Great. So some other facts then. <clears throat> we talked about some of the structures, haven't we? We talked about some of that sort of stuff. What about the stuff it's actually moving around? <clears throat> so the body, this is real blood, by the way, <clears throat> the body has about six litres of blood circulating around it. So there's two litre bottles there, <clears throat> six litres of it circulating around the body, <clears throat> four to six litres. And what is that blood made up of? OK, so it's made up. It carries oxygen. That's one of its main, main purposes <clears throat> is to carry oxygen around the body. But it also carries nutrients. So things to <clears throat> make our bones stronger or take stuff there if we need to regenerate some of our muscles because we <clears throat> um, um, worn them out or we know we need to get some energy into them. So it'll move that sort of stuff around. <clears throat> it also moves waste out of the body. So it helps shift some the rubbish that we're making up in our body and it moves that out as well. <clears throat> so of your blood then, of your blood, of those six litres that I just showed you, <clears throat> about 45% of that is made up of blood cells, okay? <clears throat> and these are various blood cells in the body. The other 55%, or half of it at least, is made up of plasma. Now, <clears throat> you probably haven't come across plasma. Plasma is a, it's a sort of yellowy type liquid, <clears throat> um, but it's, it's basically the, it's the, the liquid that carries stuff around uh, the body. And plasma, <clears throat> as you probably can work out, is about 92% water. So most of the plasma <clears throat> is just water, okay, that's carrying these nutrients around. <clears throat> There's other things that are carried around in it, glucose, proteins, and fat cells. Watch out for that later on, because that will come back up again. <clears throat> so it's carrying all these things around the body to help regenerate us and keep us strong and carry oxygen and all these sorts of things around the body. <clears throat> so 
it also has white blood cells and they their primary fo focus is to fight infection <clears throat> so if you've ever cut yourself and you've got a you know you end up getting some pus in it <clears throat> that's your white blood cells all coming together and going right we've got to do something about this we've got to fight this off we've got to <clears throat> get rid of the infection we've got to do all these sorts of things okay so that's what your white cells are doing and then the red blood cells <clears throat> There you go, there's some red blood cells. They're not that big. <clears throat> these, these little folks are quite small, um, but they are donut shaped, as you see. You can see on there, they're a bit donut shaped look. <clears throat> and they carry a protein called hemoglobin. <clears throat> and hemoglobin is crucial. That's the one that carries a lot of the oxygen <clears throat> that carries it around. And there are another big figure for you, 25 trillion of these. <clears throat> I don't know whether somebody sat there and counted them and, and waited, but they've worked out there's 25 trillion of these. <clears throat> and these little folks, these red blood cells last about four months and they're regenerated <clears throat> all the time. Our body's regenerating them. So a bit like something breaks, you get it replaced. And this is what your body is doing all the time. Now, there's certain diseases <clears throat> where that doesn't quite work as well. We're not going to talk about those today. But generally speaking, these folks carry the oxygen around your body <clears throat> on something called hemoglobin. And another interesting fact, I've been now talking for 20, <clears throat> 20 odd minutes. So that's a lot of seconds. <clears throat> Every second, my body has created about 2 million more red blood cells. <clears throat> it's also got rid of a load, but it's also created a load. <clears throat> and in the blood, there's also something called platelets. And platelets are part of stuff that helps us clot blood. <clears throat> so when we cut ourselves, those little white blood cells, and there's more to it than just it being white blood cells, but they will come along, they will fight off the infection, they'll eat all the bad stuff, and then they'll, the pus that's dead white blood cells <clears throat> creates, and it's just there, it's just dead tissue. What happens is then there's this healing process and you'll start to notice your blood will clot. If you've ever cut yourself, you'll notice <clears throat> that after a while it will clot. And this is your body creating a seal around that <clears throat> wound. Now, you folks are not primary school children. And if I was doing this to primary school children, I think it's still the same as it was when I was a child. <clears throat> if you've got a scab on your knee, the best thing to do with it was pick it off. That's what we used to do in primary school. Uh, not advisable because actually what that scab is doing, it's a protective layer. <clears throat> you know, that if you pick a scab off, you just bleed again. And your body's saying, for goodness sakes, I put that scab on there to solve the problem. And all you've done is taking it off. It's there for a reason. <clears throat> Great. So I move my slide just for a second. Right. So let's go through <clears throat> a picture that you have seen numerous amounts of times. And uh, so it doesn't matter where we start on this, but deoxygenated blood is pumped out of the right ventricle <coughs> of the heart through the pulmonary artery. And it goes to the right and left lungs. And, th and through a process called gaseous exchange in those little, little alveoli, <coughs> which are like grapes or small little sacs, it transfers the oxygen that we brought in, <coughs> puts it into the blood vessels, and then sends it back through the pulmonary vein, okay? Now, some of you in the group might turn around and be quite clever. <coughs> Let's see if somebody can do that by the end of this conversation. I just said something there <coughs> that might not necessarily make sense. So deoxygenated blood, i.e. blood that doesn't have oxygen in it, <coughs> travels out of your heart via the pulmonary artery to the lungs, and the lungs give it oxygen and it gets sent back to the heart by, by the pulmonary vein. <coughs> so the pulmonary vein takes reoxygenated blood into the left atrium. <coughs> and your left atrium squeezes it down into the left ventricle. <coughs> and your left ventricle then squeezes it out to the rest of the body. <coughs> and this is under pressure. It's really important. It's under pressure. And it goes out of that via something called the aorta. <coughs> now, I know... Um, having spoken to some people who are doing trying to get their heads around this is very easy ways to remember <clears throat> certain blood vessels that we're talking about and aorta is an easy one aorta sounds like artery so therefore <clears throat> it has to be a major artery and we know that oxygen you know oxygenated blood is carried by arteries good way of remembering it <clears throat> so it takes that oxygenated blood and it's important it gets to where it needs to. Remember, we jumped up and down, or I hope you did, <clears throat> and your body's saying, I need oxygen. <clears throat> so your heart beats faster. 
So it's under pressure to get the stuff where it needs to be when it should be there. <clears throat> so what happens though, once it leaves in those big blood vessels, those big arteries, uh, remember these are quite big <clears throat> and it's got to get to my little finger. It's got to get to my little toe. <clears throat> and I don't have enough room in my toes or my fingers <clears throat> to put great big arteries. So what it has is these arteries are big and they become smaller and they become smaller still until they become these tiny, tiny capillaries <clears throat> where the oxygen is handed over and the blood then travels via the venous system through the venous capillaries and the venules into the veins, large veins, and then back to the heart. <clears throat> um, and it comes in in the right atrium. So I'm in the right hand side of the heart. <clears throat> and then it comes in via two veins. Another thing to remember when you're looking at your GCSEs or whatever else is you're looking at. <clears throat> remember, aorta sounds like artery. And the two veins you've got that are really important that come into the heart are the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. <clears throat> really easy to remember that they're veins because vena sounds like veins, aorta sounds like artery. I'm stretching it, but I think you can follow what I'm saying. <clears throat> so then how do you work out which one's which? The inferior is coming in from the bottom and the superior is coming from the top. <clears throat> now, without trying to sound too un PC about this, <clears throat> inferior is below, superior is better or higher. That's the way to remember it. Superior, higher, better, coming in from the top. <clears throat> inferior, lower, coming in from the bottom. And the inferior vena cava, vena, vein. Don't, don't worry about what cava means. <clears throat> it's basically the two large veins coming to the right atrium. And then it pushes it all down into the right ventricle, which then starts that process again. <clears throat> so that I always find, <clears throat> I always find that is really, really quite tricky to understand sometimes. I'm just going to move back to this slide so we can <clears throat> make it simpler. I always find that really quite tricky to understand. And I've already told you that I like to keep things simple. <clears throat> so much so that I've got to find a whiteboard so I can clean the board. <clears throat> so many of you folks, uh, particularly in lockdown, have probably re relied on good old Amazon <clears throat> or good old Tesco's or whoever it might be to deliver your stuff. So what happens when you deliver your stuff? <clears throat> so I don't know what it is. Let's <clears throat> let's go with ordering something from Amazon. So <clears throat> hopefully you can see all this. I'm looking on my screen to check again. This is you folks. This is where you're sending your order from. So we'll put you folks right down there at the bottom at the moment. <clears throat> as your house, okay? And you send an order, don't you? You, you, you do it online or, or whatever. <clears throat> and you send an order. This is my telegraph poles. <clears throat> Could do it over the internet. Doesn't matter. Just easy to do that. <clears throat> so your telegraph poles send a message up to <clears throat> the call center. Don't they? <clears throat> oh, my hearts are falling over. I'll show you that. <clears throat> Call center. Yeah? So somebody up there takes your order <clears throat> and they know what you want. Brilliant. With me so far? Great. <clears throat> then what happens? Another telegraph pole. <clears throat> your call center then sends a message <clears throat> to the factory that's got to make it and do the work. <clears throat> okay, there's the factory. Got it? You placed your order, you sent it up to the call center. The call center sent a message down to the heart, uh, <clears throat> gave it away then to the factory to tell it what it needs to do. <clears throat> now, your heart at this point <clears throat> is saying, right, we've got to work out what we're going to do here. So it needs to check. <clears throat> that uh, it's got lots of important stuff to do. It needs to check there's something to deliver it. Remember, we're talking about that book or <clears throat> game station or PlayStation game you've ordered, and it needs something to deliver it. There's my little delivery truck. Other uh, delivery companies probably are available. <clears throat> so that starts off, okay, in the right atrium, <clears throat> the right-hand side of it there. Whoops, let's stick it on somewhere else. <clears throat> it's empty. 
So the factory has got to decide, <coughs> does it have what it needs to carry it? I've got to find my pens now. <coughs> so it needs to work out what it's going to do. So it knows <coughs> here that it's got its delivery truck that needs to deliver something. <coughs> it's got to deliver it somewhere, hasn't it? So put my next one up. <coughs> We've got the fuel. There you go, you can't see that. There's a fuel tank for you, okay? <coughs> Let's put the fuel tank on there. <clears throat> now, the heart has got to send this delivery truck <clears throat> to get something, all right? So it sends it, remember it's sending from, from the top right-hand corner <clears throat> to the delivery gate at the bottom here. So it sends it down there like that to here. <clears throat> and then it sends it. On a road <clears throat> to get the fuel. Can you see that? Is that clear, Sean? <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so a delivery truck has come round to the pump, and what it needs to do at the pump <clears throat> is collect something. Excuse me, big ones. There's your parcel. Got it? <clears throat> So we'll put the parcel onto the delivery truck. <clears throat> there we go. So that's done what it needs to do. <clears throat> it then has another road <clears throat> and your delivery then travels on the road <clears throat> and comes to the quality control center <clears throat> on the left hand side of this factory okay <clears throat> oh thanks sean that's brilliant come to the left hand side of the factory <clears throat> now like all good factories it needs to check that it's doing the right thing <clears throat> so before it sends it out it sends it down to the service gate at the bottom <clears throat> so it sends it to the service gate with me so far <clears throat> now it's got to get the delivery out <clears throat> right, so we've got another road there. Okay with that? <clears throat> so it's got another road there. And it's going to send this out. Now, <clears throat> I don't know about you folks, but whenever I um whenever I <clears throat> order something, I want it now, don't I? Oops, I'm trying to find out where I am. I want it now. I want it quick. <clears throat> I want it rapidly. So <clears throat> they're going to send this van out quickly and under pressure. The, the, folk, the person that's driving this vehicle <clears throat> is under a great lot of pressure to come and deliver his parcel to you. <clears throat> we'll just remove the telegraph poles for a second. <clears throat> Hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> right now what's happened here you'll look at these big tubes <clears throat> have become smaller tubes to become even smaller tubes <clears throat> to deliver your parcel to your house <clears throat> now some of you may live on a big main road and that's easy <clears throat> but if you imagine you live on a uh, on a housing estate you don't have a big main road you have a big main road that goes to the middle and then you have a slightly smaller road <clears throat> that leads down onto your onto your estate and they have a smaller lane that leads to your house <clears throat> that's what's gone on here so this has brought your parcel <clears throat> round to the house and of course it drops off the parcel <clears throat> at your house you folks are really really happy and then what happens is <clears throat> the truck then needs to leave move the heart out of the way <clears throat> Move the hearts up there. Oops, gone too high. <clears throat> right. So, 
We'll draw a little bridge on there for it so it can go over it. Take those out. <coughs> and then it comes in here. <coughs> <coughs> so your vehicle then, drawn out diagram there. So it's left your house down here. <coughs> and it's traveled along those smaller lanes backwards, <coughs> as you can see, into the bigger veins. <coughs> over the bridge and into where it started from <clears throat> now remember i said here you want your delivery to happen like this really quickly but that delivery driver once he's delivered your parcel <clears throat> he's gonna go oh i'm not in so much of a rush now i can drive home slowly i'm not in a panic <clears throat> he's only in a panic here he's not in a panic in this process <clears throat> so we're going to add some <clears throat> different elements here so let's <coughs> take out your house <coughs> and we'll put in a gym because <coughs> the gym wants some new gym equipment and the you'll see why I've done this. <coughs> so there's your gym. We've got a butcher's shop. <coughs> They're there as well. They're, they've got some stuff and we'll have the <coughs> we will have the restaurant. <coughs> Well, the restaurant, we'll put the restaurant there for now. <coughs> okay. Put the restaurant there. <coughs> and then we see something change, don't we? Because all of these, all of these people all want deliveries, don't they? So they're all wanting deliveries. <coughs> the restaurant's falling off. Hang on a second. And then we'll go for me oh, blue. Where's the blue? <coughs> there it is. We'll have another bridge there, I think. That'll do us. <coughs> so now what we've added here <coughs> is some other elements to my to my geography map. We've done PE, we've done a bit of maths, <coughs> we're doing a bit of biology. We're now doing a bit of geography and <coughs> recycling. We'll have a bit of recycling in there. <coughs> so our truck then, let's go back to the beginning. <coughs> I think I've got to uh, continue my, <coughs> my um, <coughs> hopefully you can see that. Yeah, that'll do. <clears throat> oh no, I'll tell you what I've got to do, make it clear. There you go. Right. <clears throat> so now we'll go through the map and we'll do it a bit quicker this time. As we truck. <clears throat> so the truck. So the gym sends a message to the call center and says it needs some more weight machines. <clears throat> the butcher sends a message up there saying it needs something some more knives <clears throat> your restaurant is sending a message to there saying we need more pots and pans and <clears throat> equipment so this parcel phone is now getting very very busy <clears throat> so we have one truck let's break it up a little bit see if i can do this <clears throat> not usually very good at multitasking folks but we'll see how it goes <clears throat> right so we start off there, don't we? And we don't have anything to carry. So we go through to the, the, the leaving gate <clears throat> and we come round to the fuel. <clears throat> and we collect something, collect the parcel, and then we go on our merry way quickly. <clears throat> and let's say we'll drop this off at the restaurant. <clears throat> yeah, and we'll leave him there for a second because we're going to come back to him in a minute. <clears throat> the next one <clears throat> starts off at the top gate, gets pushed out through the bottom gate, it's got to go and collect something. So it gets to there, collects the next parcel. <clears throat> got the next parcel. Then he's got to push really fast. He's got to really quickly, isn't he? He's got to get around there really, really quickly, <clears throat> into the top of the heart, out through the gate, round there, through there, round there, to the gym. Oh, you know what I'm done. Sorry. <clears throat> so 
he's got to the gym look and he's dropped off the parcel there to the gym <clears throat> and then he can drive all the way back home again over the bridge to where he started let's make him do another delivery shall we <clears throat> the last delivery of the day i think on this one <clears throat> so sending the uh <clears throat> truck from the top right hand corner down to the bottom through the gate round there to the filling station the fuel station <clears throat> gets its parcel and it goes he's got to get there quickly remember fast 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 under pressure under pressure under pressure <clears throat> drops it off at the butchers and then he can amble his way home as well okay <clears throat> so we'll, we'll call that quits on him at the moment I think we're cool with that <clears throat> right what's going to happen with this guy over here this one something special is going to happen here <clears throat> because while the, the um the restaurants for some reason <clears throat> create a lot of rubbish I can't find any rubbish anywhere. There it is. <clears throat> the restaurants create a lot of rubbish. There's the rubbish. Okay, they create a lot of that. A lot of, lot of rubbish they don't need. <clears throat> so it needs to get rid of it. So it decides to send it <clears throat> via uh, another small road, because it's not in a hurry. It's not in a hurry, this one. <clears throat> a small road round to the recycling centre, <clears throat> which takes, takes our waste keeps it <clears throat> and then our van can carry on long driving and come back to the heart or come back to the factory where it stopped <clears throat> i hope that's really simple and really easy <clears throat> let's change this up a little bit and put this put put a bit more uh perspective onto this for you <clears throat> so we'll start with the um the factory <clears throat> the call center we'll take that off and you can see that's the brain. <clears throat> These little telegraph poles are my nerves, nerve impulses, and there are other things that go on as well <clears throat> that bring bring messages back and forth. But uh, we're not going to talk about those here. <clears throat> we then got the factory, haven't we? We'll get rid of our lorries. We got the factory. <clears throat> now I told you didn't I? <clears throat> the, the heart has four main areas. <clears throat> the drawing isn't that great. I was never never an artist. That's one thing you're not going to learn from me today <clears throat> is art. Let's go to the fuel centers then. <clears throat> the fuel center is your lungs. <clears throat> now I'm very aware there's two lungs, so I'm very aware of that. Let's break down what our other ones are. Let's go to the gym. <clears throat> you got to follow me on my on my very very tentative leaps here <clears throat> but the the gym <clears throat> is your muscles there you go your muscles okay with that <clears throat> any guesses what your butcher is going to be the butcher <clears throat> is going to be your bones and your skeleton okay <clears throat> and your restaurant finally will be your stomach <clears throat> and your recycling center is a rather wonky wrong way around <clears throat> liver so let's do this then very very quickly <clears throat> circulation system using our map <clears throat> so our muscles our bones and our stomach and our skin and our brain and everywhere else says <clears throat> i need oxygen we need something to carry it <clears throat> so the brain has our red blood cells remember <clears throat> and we, we'll use lots of them because i'm running out of time so let's imagine where's my oxygens <clears throat> there they are right <clears throat> so comes in the top as deoxygenated remember and gets pushed around it says we need to get this oxygenated comes around to the lungs where it's given lots of oxygen there you go chemistry as well we're covering everything here okay <clears throat> so it puts the oxygen in there and the lungs send it back to the heart to be quality control checked and the heart goes yep yeah, cool with that and it's under pressure remember because everybody's demanding this so it comes all the way around through this arterial system under pressure <clears throat> 
and will drop off an oxygen at the brain. The brain can have one. And it's going to drop an oxygen off at the, I remember it's coming around here, <clears throat> it'll drop one off at the stomach. And I've run out. <clears throat> it's going to drop one off at the, oops, that's not an oxygen. <clears throat> There's the oxygen. Oh, I have got enough. So it drops an oxygen off at the heart, the, 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 the muscles. <clears throat> And it also drops a, an oxygen off there. So it's come all the way around with all these oxygens, dropped it off, dropped it off, dropped it off, and then it doesn't have any oxygen on it. <clears throat> and it comes all the way back to the heart again to start the process again. Okay. <clears throat> Hopefully that is <clears throat> Sean's quick way of remembering the circulation system. Now, <clears throat> what happens when it goes wrong? So let me put up the... <clears throat> my next tubes, where's my, where's my frame? What happens when it goes wrong? So that should be happening about 60 times a minute, I think is probably about right. <clears throat> so we'll put this up here. And <clears throat> you'll see on here, I've got my tubes. <clears throat> Oops, so you've got your vein on that side, which is blue. And you've got your artery on that side, <clears throat> which is red. <clears throat> and... I have got to maintain a rate. Let's see if I can <coughs> line this up with my bag. If it doesn't work, then I'm in trouble because I'm going to have balls all over the place. <coughs> so, Christmas baubles, red blood cells. <coughs> Let's go and time it right. <coughs> so I'll test one first. Yeah. So, I have got to, <coughs> let's start from now. So I have got to drop <coughs> about one of these <coughs> every second into my tube, goes in one side, comes out the other, <coughs> and it goes through, and it drops through, and this is doing what it's doing around the body. <coughs> it's going through the arteries with the oxygenated blood. It's going to the venous system. It's coming out the other end. <clears throat> it's going around the circus again, going around the <clears throat> oh, I'm dropping some. <clears throat> so, so still dropping through. <clears throat> and I've got to be doing this for about 60 beats <clears throat> per minute. If I don't chuck them on the floor. <clears throat> Brilliant. So you've already seen <clears throat> that me having to do this. It's actually quite tiring. <clears throat> I'm getting exhausted just doing this on my own, all right, without <clears throat> all the other pressures that are going on with me. <clears throat> We're almost there. <clears throat> Brilliant. <clears throat> so we'll stop there, okay? <clears throat> That's normal. That's what happens when we don't have a problem. <clears throat> Let's change that up a little bit. <clears throat> Let me find my baubles again. <clears throat> I've got a different tube now. This tube <clears throat> says venous blood on it. So this is blood from the veins. And it's blue because it's deoxygenated. Now, <clears throat> contrary to popular belief, your blood is not blue. It's still red. It's just darker red. <clears throat> but you'll notice... There's some tubes on it, some holes in it. <clears throat> <clears throat> so remember, this is when it goes wrong, okay? <clears throat> so I'll put my venous system up there like that, <clears throat> line the bag up again, and hopefully this will work. <clears throat> so if it works, remember, I've got to get 60 to 80 of these red blood cells around my circulation at a time. <clears throat> and, oh... Okay, <clears throat> so some of you have probably noticed <clears throat> something that's happening here <clears throat> that I don't like. I don't like it very much because <clears throat> they're supposed to be coming out of this end, aren't they? They're supposed to be going into the circulation system. <clears throat> What's happening? They're coming out these holes at the bottom. <clears throat> so I'm having to work faster because I've still got to get 60 balls in the end, <clears throat> but they are dropping out <coughs> through my holes, and I'm not happy with that. <coughs> so I'm going to have to work faster to do it. <coughs> and I can't keep up. 
because <coughs> I'm losing them out my holes and they're coming out the bottom <coughs> and I've got a problem okay so I am now out of breath I've got baubles all over my floor of my office thank goodness nobody else is around <coughs> so what happens then this is our venous system and this is a cut this is if you're bleeding okay <coughs> and sometimes we can see it and generally speaking if you get a small cut on your finger your body's not going to want to work that hard <coughs> to try and get those baubles through as quickly it's not going to worry about it we're talking big big bleeding <coughs> horrible bleeding that's that's really really nasty so if that happens <coughs> and lots of red blood cells are coming out remember i had to get 60 of them from this end of the tube <coughs> to this end of the tube so i had to work faster to get 60 balls through because i was losing them through my tubes through my holes where we're bleeding <coughs> so really really important and that's why <coughs> what happens at some point when you're bleeding it's what happens with your body it will come along and it will have <coughs> lots of those cells that we're talking about so <coughs> we'll probably have a handful of these red blood cells that will collect <coughs> at the hole and start to block it up not chuck them out like that <coughs> they'll start to block it up and form that scab thus allowing all those other blood vessels to go through and your heart can slow down again to a rate that it really likes <coughs> <coughs> I think we're doing very well for time. Any questions so far? <coughs> no? Okay. <coughs> right. <coughs> so, um, let's think about the <clears throat> more serious one I think I mentioned to you earlier on about the importance of you folks looking after your hearts eating well not smoking I know none of you will do that <clears throat> eating healthily not eating too much fast food and you've probably heard of people that have had a stroke or a heart attack before <clears throat> and hopefully you can prevent yourselves from getting to that stage by some simple things and that is obviously eating healthily <clears throat> uh, exercising <clears throat> and um, any other sort of good good stuff that you want to do around that <clears throat> but what happens if it goes wrong <clears throat> now we've got arterial blood here so this is in an artery okay <clears throat> now obviously it's not clear like this but you can see in there <clears throat> stuff has collected on that tube <clears throat> what it should look like as you go through it see if it works <clears throat> you should it should be clear <clears throat> should be able to see me through your tube well you won't be able to see me through the veins <clears throat> but there's nothing blocking that <clears throat> if you look down this one however you can clearly see there's a blockage in there somewhere okay <clears throat> we don't like blockages they're not good <clears throat> so we'll put my blood arterial blood vessels up there <clears throat> and i'll get the other box of <clears throat> baubles Christmas baubles always handy for this session. <clears throat> right, so <clears throat> this one is really, really important to think about. <clears throat> Remember, we said the heart wants to try and get the blood vessel, blood through the lung, through the vessels as easily as possible. <clears throat> it doesn't want to be blocked off. If you think of that <clears throat> Amazon truck, that, that delivery truck from earlier on, if there's roadworks on a road, he's delayed or they're delayed. <clears throat> If there is a car crash, they're delayed. <clears throat> it doesn't like delays. It doesn't like that. And many of you folks have probably been in the car traveling somewhere <clears throat> and you've been stuck in a traffic jam. <clears throat> traffic jams are not fun. They're awful. Everything slows down and everybody gets stressed and everybody gets angry. And then <clears throat> all of a sudden when, that, when the thing that was causing that uh, bottleneck, that problem, gives way everybody speeds up again and rushes down the road don't they <clears throat> and everybody's not happy they're all stressed they're all late they're all not 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 doing too well <clears throat> so what's going on here then don't want to break the ball holes <clears throat> see if the thing still lines up <clears throat> remember i want to try and get as many of these baubles down my tube as possible don't i <clears throat> we already said that we already know that's what we want to achieve 
<clears throat> so my heart is doing what it should be doing normally. <clears throat> Let's get rid of those. <clears throat> so my heart's doing what it should do normally. It's pushing the baubles down. <clears throat> oh, I love this, it's working. <clears throat> and the heart's pushing these down. <clears throat> and I, the baubles are, some of them are coming out the other end. <clears throat> Some of them are coming out the other end. <coughs> Problem is, <coughs> what's happening with some of them up here, look. <coughs> so some of them are coming out, and we're getting this blockage here. <coughs> then you can see that. Getting a blockage of blood vessels. Because <coughs> some are going down, aren't they? We've got that. Some are going down. <coughs> some are getting through, look. <coughs> Let's see, some of them are getting through. <clears throat> but some of them are just not budging. They're, they're just staying where they are and they're getting stuck. <clears throat> so we've got a problem here. And what's happening is these blood vessels will build up and build up and build up. <clears throat> and this is where we've got some major, major problems. If you've ever heard of somebody having a stroke or a heart attack. <clears throat> got two issues here. We know that when blood it doesn't move very much, it starts to clot and stick together. <clears throat> so ending up with some very sticky blood vessels here <clears throat> that are probably a lot bigger than they should be should be this size <clears throat> they're probably coming out about this size and what's happening is they're getting stuck <clears throat> on this yellow stuff in here <clears throat> remember i said to you earlier on about fat cells <clears throat> and those fat cells that are circulating around the body and we need to be very careful how many fat cells we've got in our body because <clears throat> if you have too many of them these fat cells can collect now, <clears throat> I'm going to put up a picture for you. Some of you may remember this. <clears throat> this is that giant fat bird that was found <clears throat> in the sewage system in London. <clears throat> Basically, people are putting there. Now we're doing ecology as well. We're covering everything in this session. <clears throat> but people are putting the wrong things down their, their sewers. They're putting fat <clears throat> and grease from their food down into the sewers. <clears throat> and in bends or in narrowing areas it starts to collect <clears throat> and you can imagine what's happened with this fatberg this fat has collected and as more fat comes over the top of it, it sticks <clears throat> and more comes along and sticks to that and more comes along and sticks to that <clears throat> so what happens to your body <clears throat> is your your heart <clears throat> is panicking it's worrying because at the moment <clears throat> it says I need to get stuff down here, <clears throat> oxygenated blood, getting to the organs that it needs to get to, <clears throat> and it can't get to it. So your heart starts to work harder. And by working harder, <clears throat> it increases the pressure on what's going on and will push those blood vessels harder. You can see my hand going down the tube there. <clears throat> it will push the blood vessels harder. <clears throat> push, 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 push. <clears throat> To get that and the blood eventually what, what might happen is <clears throat> a couple of things a great big clot might come out of this end of the tube not good <clears throat> what's also going to happen is some of this fatty stuff might break off that's not good <clears throat> so what can happen then when that happens what will happen is that <clears throat> a couple of things we've already said our blood vessels get smaller as we go through and if you've got a big clot <clears throat> going through a small blood vessel, it's likely to block it. <clears throat> and that's where you're going to get your heart attack or possibly your stroke. <clears throat> if that fat breaks off, it can do the same thing. <clears throat> so the key is to not have that fat in the body <clears throat> and, and make sure your blood can flow through nicely. And that's what we really want to try and prevent. <clears throat> now, next time your parents will probably they may well moan and say at some point that <clears throat> the sinks got blocked if you ever hear that take a look at the, the u-bend the, the drain when they take it off <clears throat> and you'll notice stuff that's probably collected on the corners there and the the, the drain isn't working <clears throat> the liquid's not going through so everything backs up but at some point that's got to give way and it'll either break off <clears throat> and potentially uh cause another blockage elsewhere because there's a clot <clears throat> or it might simply <clears throat> just travel somewhere and get trapped in a narrow alleyway 
and not be able to go anywhere. So <clears throat> thank you for listening. I'm five seconds over. I'm quite impressed with myself. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope that was helpful. Um, and if you've got any questions for me, please do ask now. If not, I'm pretty sure you can contact somebody at the university and we'll put you in touch. Thank you very much. Bye.